Hi, you guys. Welcome to a little love for your low back low back love. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I am so happy that you're here and you are going to be really happy that you're here once you're done with this video. Uh, so we're going to keep this short and sweet, but if you have done my happy hips and hammies video, it's going to be a lot of the same or similar movements. So if you're familiar with that, you're already set for this. All right. So we are going to come onto the floor and lay back all the way back. Oh yeah. So just get nice and comfy, allow your body to just find the floor, sense the parts of the body that are touching the floor. And this is really important because we just need to transition from sort of the outside world to where we are now, yeah? Feet on the floor, this is nice for grounding. If you can, take those feet as wide as the mat. If you don't have a mat, doesn't matter. You can take them just wider than your knees and hips. Knees knock in toward each other. Sometimes I like to just place my hands on my body. So one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly, or you can just have hands and palms by your side, whichever way you prefer. We're gonna take five deep breaths here together before we really start moving. Okay, now that we're nice and settled in, I want you to take the arms wide to a T, bring the knees back into alignment with the lower legs, and again, take the feet wide. So we're just gonna slowly windshield wiper the knees side to side. Now when I say slow and you start moving slow, what you think is slow, I want you to go even slower than that, okay? So we really want to be gentle with this lumbar spine, that's your low back area. It is the most mobile part of our spine, so we need to treat it with a lot of love. Okay, both knees, the next time they move to the left, just have them fall there. Okay, this is a nice supine twist for you. Doesn't matter where the knees are. They don't have to be on the floor. Wherever they've fallen, just leave them there. Breathe into any spots in your body that feel tense or tight. So you can close down the eyes. And generally, if you haven't done much yoga, we breathe in and out through the nose, okay? So we want a slow, deep, and deliberate breath. For those of you who have come to yoga more regularly and you want more sensation in this shape, you could bring that left ankle on top of the right thigh. So left ankle on top of the right thigh and this additional weight on that right thigh will give you a little bit uh, more sensation and get you sort of deeper in the pose, yeah? but I don't want you to be in a place where you can't breathe. So let's build toward this together. If this is not where you are today, it does not matter. You'll get here, I promise. All right, let's switch sides. So we're gonna unravel that top leg if you had it crossed and come back to center. You may need to reposition your hips or feet here, remember, feet are as wide as the mat, we're gonna take that windshield wiper one more time. So knees fall to the right, knees fall to the left. Remember you're moving super slow. And the next time your knees fall to the right, just have them hang there in your supine twist. Now remember, you can stay here and just breathe, or if you want, right ankle can come on top of the left thigh this time. And 
I'll just make mention of this one more time. If you've done that happy hips and hammies video I mentioned, you wanna keep your shoulders on the ground in these twists, okay? You don't want one shoulder to be lifted. Keep that connection, all right? So breathe in and out through the nose. For three. Two. And one. Right leg uncrosses itself and come back to center. You can toe heel the feet together, one knee at a time, bring them into your chest. And you can rock side to side if you like. Hands can come onto the shins. Do not pull from the knees, okay? Now, we're gonna come into happy baby pose or reclined butterfly. You can do both if you want. So reclined butterfly is just a butterfly pose on your back, soles of the feet together, Supta Baddha Konasana, for those of you who wanna learn the fancy words. <laughs> so soles of the feet together, knees come apart. You can use your elbows here to drive the inner thighs back, the knees back, right? So again, you don't wanna press on any joints here, but the meaty part of the leg. So this is your Supta Baddha Konasana. If you like this, you can stay here. If you want a little bit more, we come into happy baby pose. So we slide the hands to the outer edge of the feet. So the pinky edge side of the toes or the foot. <laughs> and then you draw the knees out toward either side of your body. Feet are flexed and the soles of the feet are pointing to the ceiling, okay? Now one day, your knees will hit the floor. Yeah, one day, maybe not today. It's not happening for me today, okay? No big deal, just breathe here, all right? You might be going, why and how, Sonia, is this relief for the low back? Well, generally speaking, you guys, if we have very tight hips, it affects the low back. And we've also worked on hamstrings at the same time, right? So it's all this stuff is connected. You got to keep that in mind. So in this happy baby, you're pulling down on the feet. And at the same time, there's a tiny push from the feet into the hands. So you're feeling sensation and energy through this outer hip, all right? And for those of you who cannot reach your feet, I should note, you can grab onto your ankle, you could grab onto your shin, your calf, literally anything you can reach, okay? All right, last breath here. As you keep your shoulders down, I'm just gonna plug those shoulders down again. The head is down, you don't wanna be up here. All right, relax that upper body. Now, to come out of this, soles of the feet come back together, knees together. We're gonna rock and roll along the spine a couple of times until you come to seated, okay? So we did a figure four in a different video on our back. We're gonna do this one sitting. All right, so right ankle crosses on top of that left thigh. Now, my hands are behind me supporting me, but they're not taking all my weight, right? So they're helping you to sit up nice and tall. The farther away, your bottom foot and the hands are from your butt, essentially, right? The easier the shape will become. If you need a challenge, if you want more sensation, scoot the foot closer, scoot the hands closer. Flex this right foot. We flex the feet so that it engages the muscles in that entire leg. And if you are not feeling this right now, you need to call me. <laughs> All right, because I want to know what kind of superpowers you have. You're feeling this in the outer right hip generally. You may be feeling it in the glutes or the hamstrings, depending again on your body, on how you move, how you exercise. Let's switch sides. 
release. Cross the left ankle over the right thigh this time. And remember that foot and ankle are all the way on the outside of the right thigh. You can scooch that bottom foot and the hands as close or as far apart as you need or want in order to feel the sensation. Now here's the thing, you wanna feel it, but you also wanna be able to breathe where you are. If you are not comfortably breathing, you need to back off, okay? And what does a comfortable breath look like? Well, I wouldn't be able to talk to you right now if I couldn't breathe through this, right? Or if you feel your breath kind of go like shaky, that's your nervous system crying for help, okay? So let's take two more breaths here together in and out through the nose. Okay, unwind your legs and we're just gonna flip over for a little cat cow. So stacking the bones here, shoulders and wrists are stacked, knees underneath the hips. Fingertips are spread nice and wide like you've got flames coming out of each finger. So this is your all fours shape, cat cow is very simple and very effective for the whole spine. So on your inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin, lift the tailbone. On your exhale, round out the spine, tuck the chin, curl the tailbone. So we're gonna do this several times. Inhale, look up, tailbone up, drop the belly. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin, curl the tail. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Like one of those angry Halloween cats. Let's do this three more times together. Inhale, lift the chin. Exhale, press the hands into the earth, round out the upper back. Last couple of times, inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale, ground down through the hands, ground down through the shins. Exhale. And finally, we're gonna take a child's pose. So knees can be together or apart, forehead toward the floor. Hips reach back toward the heels. Now, if your forehead does not touch the floor, you can grab a pillow or a blanket and set it underneath your forehead, okay? This is gonna be a nice um, sense of elongation for the low back. Knees together will hit the low back. Knees apart will hit the outer uh, hips or the external rotation of the hips. So you can really choose to be in either place. Let's take five final breaths together to round out this practice. Feel the belly rising and falling either on top of the thighs or in the inner thighs, the inseam of the leg depending on whether you have the knees together or apart. Okay, and you guys have made it. Bring the hands back to the earth round up through the spine. Hey, I hope your low back feels good. Thank you so much for being here today. You are loved and supported. Until next time.